shortcut to do something. Hyperbaric medical specialist. Today's video is about hyperbaric medicine and the highest battlefield on the planet Earth. The rooftop of the world is the place where this battlefield occurs. This is situated at the border of Pakistan with China and India. And it is the same place where all the 14,000 mountains, which are above 8,000 meters in height, that translates to more than 26,000 feet above sea level. The enormity of these 14 peaks and the height of this area can be compared. The red ones are those mountains which are found in the rooftop of the world and the rest of the tallest mountains of the planet Earth. As you can see, there is no comparison among these mountains. Among the 14,000ers, Nepal has 8 and China has 1. These mountains at the rooftop of the world provide a hostile environment. Survival is impossible here. Pakistan has five eight thousander peaks like the K2 Broad Peak and Geshebram. Pakistan possesses the rooftop of the world because in this area Pakistan also has 150 7000 peaks which are mostly not climbed by the mountaineers. Because of this enormous mountains and the great heights, this area is covered under snow all year around. And this is the place where this colossal glacier occurs. These glaciers are very famous in the world and one of them is the Siachen Glacier and the other is Aksaichin Glacier. Siachen Glacier occurs in Pakistan and Aksaichin Glacier occurs in China. And this form the highest battlefield on the planet Earth. Siachen is very beautiful and it's amazing to be there. It's right where the K2 mountains and the five tallest 14,000ers are. It's right besides there. The most adventurous people go there to do mountaineering and the mountaineering permits are given by Pakistan. This is the map of Siachen Glacier, a triangular area bound by one side by Pakistan and on other side by China and on the third side by India through the Indian administered Kashmir. All three are nuclear powers. And what they are doing at this great height is known as Oro politics. Oro politics is the politics of the mountains at the great height. So there were three great battles fought over here by Pakistan and India and China. The first one was right after the World War I when the geopolitics changed and the partition of Indian subcontinent happened and the Pashtuns, non-competent volunteers 
got Kashmir for Pakistan, but part of it had to be surrendered back to India in order to cease fight to happen after a year old war. Second war was fought on the same remaining Kashmir by Pakistan as Second Indo-Pak War in 1965. And a year before, India also fought a war with China on Aksai Chin. So what was the reason was a disputed line of control, which was having different interpretation by all the three great nuclear powers, by Pakistan, by India, and by China. So in this confusion, a mountaineer gave a map to Indian Colonel Narendra Kumar, who is known as the father of oral politics, and he started all this war at the battlefield, which is highest in the world on planet Earth. He took this map to the general headquarters to show them and able to convince them that India should form its own map. They did not listen to him in 1970, but in 1978, they gave them the permission. This was the time when the Pakistan was busy fighting a war in Afghanistan at the western border and Siachin Glacier at the eastern border with India was a bit neglected. So they climbed up to do mission of mapping the Siachin Glacier. But they were greeted by the Pakistan army helicopters who fired at them and they had to come back. As they came to know of the Indian intention just in time. But India never gave up its ambitions. So in 1981, it sent a team under Colonel Narendra Kumar and they successfully mapped the Siachin Glacier and they published their findings in the Mountaineer magazine to claim what was there. Since Pakistan was the one who would give the mountaineering contracts to the expedition right till 1971, so it did not take this very lightly and because of the conflict of Kashmir on which it had fought two wars was the history. Then Pakistan also started preparing to get the Siachin. So Indian Army got to know of their preparations and in 1984 it hastily conquered the Siachin Glacier and the Indian Army was at the heights in 1984 of the Siachin Glacier. And the height of Siachin Glacier is about 6,000 meters, you know. That is extreme height. The Indian Army was elated and very happy on its accomplishment to occupy this great height, but it did not know the harsh conditions that would ravage its army for the next half a century. So Pakistan army in 1984 with a daring mission recaptured their heights, but not all of them. The Pakistan army matched the Indian army with all its might. They brought 
everything they could use artillery guns helicopters guns missiles rockets everything and with the manpower and the army to man it so this was the height which is extremely high and the mountaineers know it is the area of the death zone but the two armies nuclear armies of india and pakistan were there and they are still there even after half of century and there is no sight of the conflict ceasing to exist because of the harsh condition and the weather and the hypoxic conditions over there the role of hyperbaric medicine is very important at this great and extreme heights the strategy employed by both the armies i would like to discuss what they are doing to survive at this madness and the great heights which is costing thousands of lives of human beings at the both sides even the deaths are classified nobody knows how many people have died on both sides of the army but they are mostly in thousands and most of the deaths are not because of the firearms this is because of the harsh weather and the hypoxic conditions over there the classification of siachen glacier as i told you is 18000 to 23000 feet that's like 5400 to 6500 meters which is classified as extremely high altitude at this height the weather is so bad that the temperature drops to minus 60 degrees centigrade and the air becomes so thin that survival is almost impossible so these are the medical condition because of the conditions on those harsh environment even the iv lines are freezing over there so to give medical first aid and to save the lives is a bit of a challenge and what is being done is actually heroic and it should be written in the annals of the science so the first condition is hip high altitude pulmonary edema which is the lung tissue swelling with fluid there is another one uh, reentry hip also been described and the death usually occurs within hours these are the signs and symptoms of the high altitude pulmonary edema the pathology is usually uh you know there are susceptible pe- people and there are resistant people the susceptible people are found to have a patent foramen ovale exaggerated circulatory response like pulmonary arterial pressure and pulmonary vascular resistance and endothelial dysfunction has been linked like reduced synthesis of nitrous oxide and increased level of endothelial hormone the treatment is steroids dexamethasone diuretic acetazolamide nifedipine and some other drugs and quick evacuation and descent is very important hyperbaric medicine treatment works with a gamo bag 
and a hyperbaric chamber. The second condition is his high altitude cerebral edema. And just like hip, the brain swells in this condition in the his. Untreated patients usually die within hours. This condition starts happening just above 4,000 meters, which is 2,000 meters less than Xiaqing. Here are the signs and symptoms of high altitude cerebral edema. Confusion and loss of consciousness is common and that is the result of deaths because decision making is difficult with this condition. The treatment is almost the same like hip, like bringing the person down quickly as treatment over there is impossible and diuretics, steroids, acetazolamide, etc. as well as hyperbaric medicine with a gamo bag or a hyperbaric chamber. Then is an interesting condition called HIF, high altitude flatulence expulsion. First described by Joseph Hamel in 1820, and this happens in high altitude mountaineers as well as aviators and those who parachute from great heights. This is a mechanical phenomena because of the rare atmosphere and less pressure outside the air expand inside the gastrointestinal tract leading to expulsion of gases. So here are the sign and symptoms of HIF and this also occurs about 4000 meters. Paragliders also experience this HIF. The treatment of the HIF is about the same, but uh, supplemental oxygen and maybe hyperbaric medicine treatment with a gamma bag or a hyperbaric chamber might be sufficient. So there is a difference between a gamma bag and a hyperbaric chamber, although they are both classified as a hyperbaric chamber. DVT and CVT, deep vein thrombosis and cerebral vein thrombosis. The hypoxia, lack of oxygen, causes the blood to clot at the extreme heights. And the blood clotting leads to this condition, which is the thrombosis of the veins in the, in the deep ones and also the cerebral ones and the consequences are fatal. Treatment is the same like steroids, supplemental oxygen and the use of hyperbaric medicine with camu bag which is lighter and it is the uh, best one to be carried around and a hyperbaric chamber nearby. Frostbite. The temperatures in this hostile environment is minus 60 degrees centigrade, which is very cold. And this happens all the year around. There is no respite. Even the summers are in the minus over there. So the troops who are stationed over there faces the difficult and harsh environment with hypoxia as well as extremely cold temperature which leads to wounds which are known as frostbite. They resemble a bit like the diabetic wounds and the treatment is also uh, similar. 
Usually the people would lose their limbs and legs because of frostbite and amputation is the treatment of this condition because it leads to gangrene. Bringing the patient lower down is the treatment and then wound care at the hospital, surgical intervention like amputation and chopping off the area which is gangrenous. Hyperbaric medicine would greatly help in saving the lives and the limb of these patients. So a gamo bag and a hyperbaric chamber can do wonders. And hyperbaric chamber later on would heal the wounds 300% quicker. The low temperature makes the water like a sword or a lancet. It's so hard that it can give you a stab or a laceration. This is very common among the people who are there in extreme environment. This wound which is caused by this icicle requires immediate first aid because the bleeding can lead to death immediately and it's extremely dangerous. Giving IV fluid at this height is almost impossible because the IV fluid freezes and to keep it warm is another problem. So first aid and then wound care when the patient is brought to lower altitude along with hyperbaric medicine, gamma bag can save the person who has blood uh, because if one cannot provide uh, blood, the hyperbaric chamber can save the life because it can keep the person alive even if the person has lost a lot of blood like even all the 5 liters. Carbon monoxide poisoning. This is because of the accommodation um, by the troops as well as the mountaineers because they use igloo-like structures to live over there. And when you live over there, you require to keep yourself warm. In order to keep warm, you have to burn stoves. And the stoves use something to burn which is usually kerosene. Usually the armies have big dumps of kerosene oil where they are fighting at the highest battlefield on the planet Earth. This uh, fuel dumps are found in big barrels they are stored and then the supplies are taken to these accommodation igloo like where they are burned in the stoves so when you burn a stove in a closed environment it can cause carbon monoxide poisoning which is the carbon monoxide actually binds with the red blood cell and it does not allow the oxygen to bind with it and the untreated patient usually die within few hours. So these are the signs and symptoms. The gas is odorless, colorless. So in order to detect this gas is a big problem. Carbon monoxide detectors are there but they usually fail and it's very difficult and the classic cherry red skin rarely occurs so in order to guess that the person is having carbon monoxide poisoning is very difficult but these signs and symptoms might help so evacuation and then bringing to lower altitude to treat uh, in a hyperbaric chamber is the best treatment because normal giving oxygen 
would not displace the carbon monoxide molecule because it has only one oxygen molecule and it forms a very strong electromagnetic bond with the red blood cells. Nutritional deficiencies are very common because of very high basal metabolic rate and dehydration because of high requirement of fluids in the body which is because of degradation of the kidney functions at this high altitude. Untreated patients usually die or develop organ failure within few hours. The treatment of nutritional deficiency and rehydration is actually uh, providing these nutritional supplements as well as water. Apart from this, there is a problem of freezing IV line. The freezing IV line happens because of minus 50 to 60 degrees centigrade over there. The extremely low temperature causes difficulty in medical treatment at extreme heights and the IV lines cannot be maintained and the syringes containing dexamethasone or other drugs, they also freeze and the untreated patient because the drugs have frozen can usually die the primary cause of freezing iv line is extremely low temperature uh, heating up of the syringes and iv lines by keeping them near the body is the solution and the patient should be brought to lower altitude so they can be treated in a field hospital or a proper hospital for the first aid and the medical treatment. Waste disposal. The lack of bacteriological degradation of the waste products, uh, the human waste products can lie there for hundreds of years or millennials to come as the bacterial activity is hampered due to the extremely cold temperature of minus 50 to 60 degrees centigrade. Untreated waste products can lead to environmental disasters at glaciers that make up of the Indus and the Ganges River. And the piling up of human waste can lead to environmental disaster in waiting to happen. And this will lead to change in the flora and the fauna of these wonders of the world, the glaciers at the rooftop of the world. And nobody is really worried about it and the world does not care about this conflict or the environmental disaster it is leading to. So in order to uh, find solution for these problems, the strategies are different by India and Pakistan. They would use field hospital at great heights and use camo bags for the high altitude mountain warfare just like the mountaineers would do but now india is using a multi-place hyperbaric chamber at siachin glacier field hospital so this is the camo bag which is very light and usually the mountaineers are familiar with it it's lightweight easy to carry and the porters carry it for them. Gamma bag use foot pump to fill it with air as there is no electricity at the mountains at great heights. It's lightweight carried by porters and it's different than a hyperbaric chamber that it uses air for compression. In a hyperbaric chamber, the air is used for compression and the oxygen is used for feeding and it's a different machine than the gamma bag. Gamma bag was uh, invented in the 1990s. Before that, there was no gamma bag. A hyperbaric chamber has been around for centuries. This is the construction of the gamo bag with zippers, relief valves, air inlets and a foot uh, pump which actually fills it up 
and the atmospheric air is used to pump it up inside. And this is what the Indians are doing at the 403 Field Hospital at Siachen Glacier. You can see a hyperbaric chamber in the background. It's a multi-chamber, multi-person. Probably 10 plus 2 people are there by the looks of it. This was actually uh, installed by the military doctors uh, through uh, organization and this is the highest hyperbaric chamber in the world because it is installed at the great height of about 20,000 feet at the Sachin Glacier on the Indian side. And the 403 Field Hospital is the location where it is found. And as you can see, it has five seats on one side and five seats on another, like 10 people can be treated. And in the secondary chamber, there are two additional seats so it's a 10 plus 2 multi-seat hyperbaric chamber and it has the swastika sign over it because the swastika sign origin comes from the indian subcontinent this hospital also has a cd scan as well as diagnostic x-ray and other facilities, surgical, operation theater, and wards, etc. And it's manned by the Indian doctors in uniform, belonging to the Indian Army. Pakistan and Nepal don't have a hyperbaric chamber available at these heights. Evacuations uh, is done towards the hospital in Islamabad area by heli mostly in Pakistan. Hyperbaric chamber at Gilgit, Baltistan or Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is mandatory for these 150 colossal gigantic mountains where the mountaineers come as well as we are having Siachen Glacier. Ideal side is Kardu, Chitral, uh, Islamabad for these hyperbaric chambers. As you can see in the map that Nanga Parbat in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and the five great 8000ers are nearby and they are near to the Skardu airport and the CMH Skardu. And Chitral is also near to Nanga Parbat so in Chitral, ideal site for the second chamber and a third one maybe in Islamabad for bringing and evacuating the people. Because of the bad weather which can hamper the evacuation, these chambers should be constructed and placed near those areas where these high mountains are so that people can be treated and lives can be saved. So here is the map of the mountains in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa area. Nanga Parbat is right in the middle and Chitral would be ideal. If not Chitral, maybe Swat or Turbela Dam, which have airports, could accommodate these chambers and there are hospitals nearby where the people's life could be saved. So in conclusion, the hyperbaric chamber could treat all these conditions and save many lives and treat these people efficiently. I suggest uh, installation of a hyperbaric chamber at the sites I recommended. And since we are fighting the highest battlefield on earth, the hyperbaric chamber would help to save many lives. So this is a proud presentation by KSY Biz Hyperbarics and I hope you would subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you very much and goodbye.